What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out a pair of Aperion Audio Bravis 2 12Ds. Alright, so let's get this thing unboxed and we'll see what we get inside. So shout out to uh, Aperion Audio for sending these out for review. I actually have two of these, two of these guys in. Inside, right on the top here, we have a box with the owner's guide right there. Cleaning cloth, very nice. Power cord and a plethora of feet, assorted feet. So we got some rubber feet and then we got some spike feet as well. These are the spikes, so spike feet. Very nice. And let's take this out of the box. Then we're gonna flip it upside down. And this thing is uh, packed quite robustly. It is encased in foam. I've never seen a subwoofer encased in foam before. But you know that it's going to be protected in transit. I feel more people should encase their subwoofers in foam and speakers in foam. Let's take a nice little bag here which for some reason they tied into a knot. Sorry, Apurian, but I'm gonna have to cut your, your knot. Once you take it out, you're gonna be greeted with a 12 inch driver. Right there, this guy is rated down to 22 Hertz. On the opposite sides here, on the left and right side of the subs, of the sub, you'll get another 12 inch. There's a 12 inch passive radiator on this side. It doesn't look like this grill comes off on the opposite side there is another 12 inch passive radiator so we've got on each side this is the front of the sub you can tell by the logo so we have a passive radiator here another passive on the side and then the active driver is going to be on the bottom this is their matte finish so it's uh, anti-reflective well it's got a little bit of sheen to it so if you're going to put this in your dedicated theater room I always like to have black as uh, matte as possible so it doesn't reflect light coming off of your screen, your television screen or your projector screen. On the back, we've got a switch for the auto power on off, phase either zero or 180 degrees. We've got the crossover, which is a variable. We've got the volume knob. We've got your RCA inputs, left and right or LFE, right there. And then we have your, um, your high level inputs here. Then of course on the bottom, we got your main power switch on off and then your AC line in. Size wise, it's fairly compact. It's 15 and a half inches wide by 15 and a half inches deep by 17 inches high. And it does weigh about pounds. I'll put the specs up on the screen to let you guys know exactly what it is. But we do have two of these guys in for review. I'm gonna hook this up in the theater and we'll come back and I'll give you some thoughts and impressions. For setup, I'll be placing the subs in my dedicated theater. One's gonna go in the front right corner and the other in the opposite left rear corner. They'll be hooked up to a Chernov Altitude processor and I'll be using a Kaleidoscape and a Zipedi Media Player for demos. I'll be turning off any room correction in the processor and using only what's available on the subs. For a list of all my review equipment, you can find it in the video's description. I come to find that 12 inch subs seem to hit pretty hard in my space, so I wanted to throw in the intro to The Greatest Showman on the Gladiscape. The start of this movie is a straight banger. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Yeah, these things can bang, no doubt. It's like watching a baseball player swing at a pitch, and all of a sudden you get that crack when the bat hits the ball. You get that same buildup with these subwoofers, then that immediate punch. They're fast, smooth, and can move a good amount of air. That being said, yes, they can crack hard, but not from a major league baseball player. It's more like a wiffle ball player. <laughs> okay, that's probably a bit dramatic. What I mean is, they don't have the same snappy tactile kick that I've heard from other subs. Granted, those subs cost more, but the Aperians can definitely punch. I just felt it was a little soft. In the, dark, the next demo we're going to check out is Monster Hunter on the Zipedi. 
This one is like 90% insane bass, all the way down to 20 hertz. These things rock above 30 hertz. I actually thought I had damaged one of the subs because there was all this rattling coming from it, but it was just whatever was inside my walls. It was crazy. And these aren't really big subs. Just like the quick punchy nature of the greatest showman, I got the same sensation with all these gunshots. They made my floor shake and the walls vibrate, and these aren't really big subs. Where these fall short is that 20 hertz rumble you feel right before Diablos pops out of the ground. With larger subs, you can feel the air vibrate before you actually hear anything, you know, below 20 hertz. Still though, everything above that gives you a big theatrical feel. And last but not least is the intro to Edge of Tomorrow on the Kaleidoscape in Dolby Atmos. As we've established with Monster Hunter, these don't reach down into the infrasonic levels. So that air vibrating, hair on your arms moving low frequency extension doesn't exist with these subs. To be fair, even much larger subs and more expensive subs can't do this demo justice. It still did enough to make my chairs shake and piss my neighbors off downstairs, so these subs are no slouch. I did take a few measurements of my space on my main listening seat. Keep in mind that these are my responses I got from my space, so it's likely going to be very different for yours. For the front sub alone, I got a dip at 60 hertz, and for the rear sub, I got a dip around 40 hertz. This is normal for my room. Both subs combined, I got a smoother response, and they do drop off around 24 hertz. At the time of this video, a single Bravis 2 12D is $9.99. I wasn't sure what to expect from these subs since I wasn't familiar with the brand, but I'm glad I got the chance to check them out. I know there's a ton of options in the under $1,000 category, and I'd put these guys near the top. As I mentioned earlier, I felt that these were quick and punchy, but did feel a bit soft up top. I suppose it could be a result of having passive radiators to enhance their extension. If this was in a sealed cabinet, it might be a little snappier. Due to this, I'd say this isn't as refined sounding as some other subs I've heard. And again, those were pricier subs. At this price point though, it still has a musical presence which did The Greatest Showman some justice and was a knockout for huge action movies. I personally feel that these subs excelled more for home theater rather than music. They can deliver a bombastic huge theater-like experience and will loosen up whatever is inside your walls. They're somewhat compact and easy to place and at a thousand bucks, I feel should be a worthwhile consideration if you're in the market for a new subwoofer and don't want to break the bank. So what is on your list of great sounding subs under a thousand bucks? And have you heard the Aperion subwoofers? If so, leave a comment down below and let us know. If you do want to pick up one of these subwoofers or want some more specs, I'll leave a link for them down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.